Hey guys, Jeremy Kane, EXP here to go over some of those hot market real estate terms that may be leaving you a bit stumped. It's always important to understand what these terms actually mean when they are spoken. In our fast moving real estate contract cycle, sometimes clients just trust their agent to make the right decision for them. With my business, I want to educate my clients on these terms that are loosely being used that have huge ramifications. Hey everybody, Jeremy Kane, XP Realty here, working to make sure you are up to date on all things real estate near and far. Subscribe to my channel for more videos like this surrounding all topics real estate. If you want something to be explained specifically, drop me a comment. I will definitely get it out there to you. At JKCO Realtor on Facebook and Instagram for all the goods as well. Today we grab all those hot market terms that are being tossed around and bring them back to earth. As you may or may not know, the real estate market is scorching across the country. Homes are selling in days, if not hours. Buyers are given 15 to 30 minutes to rush through a home before making a decision on the biggest investment most people make in their lifetime. This has made me stop and think about what my clients need to know and when they need to know it so they can make the best educated decision on an offer on a home. So here we go, appraisal gap. This is a term that refers to the buyer willing to pay a gap between the appraised value and the contract price. Depending on how you word this, you could be signing a blank check or have a limit on the amount you are contractually obligated to bring to the table. Next, we have an appraisal waiver. This is the buyer waiving the right to object to an appraisal gap, therefore signing a blank check contractually to the seller. You may or may not obtain an appraisal waiver from the lender. If you do have a waiver from the lender, which most of you will not know until you are after you're under contract, then you can waive your right to an appraisal, meaning that the lender will lend on the contracted amount. In the event the lender does not issue a waiver, but you have an appraisal waiver in your contract, you're only waiving your right to object. It is very important that you read the extra verbiage in your contract and understand what you're agreeing to, as well as review the date section and make sure you have those dates in the contract. Make sure that you don't just get into a groove and not review these things on every contract you write. Inspection waiver. This is waiving your right to inspect the property. So let's talk about this. Less than 30 minutes, biggest investment of your life, probably not a good idea to waive your inspection. This is extreme. Some other inspection language may be included, such as the right to inspect on a pass fail basis, meaning you can still inspect so you know what you are buying into, but not object. A safer route would be to note the items you will limit your objections to. My personal favorite is health and safety, major mechanical, plumbing, electricity, and structural. This pretty much covers everything the seller would consider fixing anyways, and protects you as the buyer to be able to get some, of, some help if these things are failing. Hard earnest money. Earnest money in Colorado is an interesting topic. The buyer can terminate the contract prior to various deadlines for various reasons and be entitled to a full earnest money refund pending the seller release. However, some contracts are coming across with hard earnest money right away or even after certain milestone dates in the contract. This seems like not a big deal, but if something were to happen to your job or something you can't control after this date, you have given your right to the money, usually one to 2% of the contract price away. Next, we'll move into escalation clause, a clause being used to say you will escalate your offer to beat someone else's offer. This seems fairly straightforward. First, make sure you qualify for the escalated amount or have your agent write it so that you won't go over the qualification amount. Second, make sure that it is removed from the contract after exercise so that in the middle of the contract, you do not get wind of another offer made and have the clause exercise outside of your control. Post-closing occupancy. This is exactly what it sounds like. And in Colorado, we have a contract laid out to lay out such terms. Before agreeing to rent your new home back to the seller, typically for free, make sure you understand when your loan payments will start and budget accordingly. Hammer out the terms, who will pay what bills, and what the actual day of the possession will be. Will there be professional cleaning? Will there be a security deposit? Just as you would review a lease for an apartment, review this agreement so you fully understand when you will get possession of your recently purchased investment. Proceed with caution, but take the time to review your contract and make sure you, your buyer's agent, and whomever else needs to be is on the same page. We oftentimes have a tendency to get sped up when submitting offers in the rat race of the real estate world, but these terms are loosely used and oftentimes not fully understood. A couple words could cost you thousands of dollars. 
I'm no real estate attorney. Definitely talk to your agent and make sure you understand what's going into every offer you write so you don't get burned.